Requirements Analysis Using Traceability Matrix In this training module, we will cover working with horizontal traceability matrix and the intersection matrix. A traceability matrix is used to manage change. This allows you to identify broken links, missing requirements, and to conform the solution to the requirements given for the solution. It can also be used to detect missing requirements. We will look at the horizontal matrix in which we will look at how scoping is done, which work items should be in the traceability matrix. We'll look at selecting link types and properties. We'll also look at an alternate means of scoping and we'll look at how you can save as Excel and get the same information in an Excel format. Similarly, we'll look at the intersection matrix. In the intersection matrix, we'll look at scoping. We'll also look at how you can create and remove links. We'll look at how you can identify missing requirements or missing test cases. And we'll also look at how scoping can be done in the intersection matrix. The trace analysis hub or menu is available under the work hub under trace analysis. In trace analysis, you can organize your traceability matrices under different folders. Once in the folder, you can simply drag and drop things and reorganize them. This is the horizontal matrix. In the horizontal matrix, in this particular case, I've identified how epics map to features, which map to user stories. They in turn map to test cases. And I have also enabled test results in one of the columns. And finally, test cases to bugs. In this traceability matrix, you will see that when information exists, uh, as in say this user story, is linked to um, a bug on the other end, then gaps are left. So for example, in this user story, this gap, gap is left so that you can see these two bugs belong to the user story. Now, if you, if you want to see these bugs directly in here, then you turn on merged view. And in the merged view, what you will see is the bugs directly next to the user story column, like this. So now the grouping is not by work item type, but immediately in the following column, we show you what, what is linked to it. These traceability matrices can also be saved as Excel documents. The Excel output is identical to that of the online traceability matrix, but this is disconnected. So it's just an output, it's a report that you can generate. However, when you look at the traceability matrix online, you can at any time hover over it and you will see some menu options appear. And now I can click on edit and this will bring up the work item edit window. How do you create a traceability matrix? The way this traceability matrix was created, let's create it brand new all over again. And I'll just call this horizontal traceability matrix. And in here you'll see this is the intersection matrix. This is the horizontal matrix. We will choose the first option. Here, I will first set the scope. The scope of this traceability matrix is going to be all the work items in the project. Now, I could select a given iteration or area path to constraint the traceability matrix. And this is, of course, because it's based on this area path, it is only for the current project. So now I'll go and say I want to begin with uh, EPIC. And then I want to have, say, feature work item. And then I want to have, let's say, user story. And I want to see how user story is mapped to 
test cases and they map to bugs. And for test cases, I'm interested in test results. And you give it a width. And that becomes our traceability matrix. There you are. So you can go and create as many traceability matrices as you like to look at information from different point of views and then do your analysis on it. The second type of traceability matrix you have is called the intersection matrix. This is an intersection matrix. In the intersection matrix, you select two set of work items. In this case, I've selected user stories, and in this case, test cases. And in the, in the cells, you see these little icons that show where the linkages exists. In this traceability matrix, you can make links. So I could do this and create a link. Okay, so if the links already exist for a parent child um, or um, uh, tested by, then it won't let you do another one. But, uh, but if I go, for example, let's say this is zero, and so I want to do it here, then I can do tested by, it goes and creates that link. Now, I can click on this and break the link. So this can be used both to make links and break links. A very rapid way of doing it. And here too, you can save this as an Excel document and produce a output that you can then share with, with others. Now the way you configure this, so let's go ahead and create a, a new traceability matrix, uh, a new intersection matrix. So I'll just call it intersection trace matrix, ITM. <clears throat> now in this one, I'll choose the first one here. And again, what I'll do is that uh, I'll choose my scope. I can choose link types that this intersection matrix should consider. And then I'll choose, say, user story versus uh, test cases, like so. But you can choose any two work items uh, here. And thus, that is your result. Now, you would have seen that there is another option here, queries. So if you go under queries for the intersection matrix, you will see that you can choose link types you want to consider, and then you have two queries. The result of one query will show you the output um, of the query, the result of the query as rows, and the other as columns. It will consider these link types and generate the traceability matrix for you. You can imagine, because queries are such a wonderful and powerful thing, that you can be very, very particular as to what information you want to see in your traceability matrix. So queries, uh, query-based uh, intersection matrix can be very interesting. Similarly, when we looked at the horizontal traceability matrix, as in this one, we selected the scope with area and iteration path. But what if you wanted to have your scope be based on other dimensions or cross-project queries? Um, and or you want to see only bugs that are not closed and so on. So in that case, you can actually go to the query here and then select a query from here. Then the result of this query will become the scope of this traceability matrix. And now you can go ahead and select all your work items and then, and then simply build on it. So uh, again, the same essential concept, but your scope has now become much bigger. The scope is controlled, through, or, or much lesser for that matter. It depends on what your query 
uh, will return as a result. So you, again, you have much finer control over what information gets shown. As you're using the system and you determine that you need some help, there's a few different options available. One option you have is to simply click on Discover to enable it, and here's a short description of it. Here are step-by-step -step guides. Here's a get started video library option. There's help here, and so on. So, so there are several resources available, and if you click on any option, then it'll show you exactly what the step-by-step -step instruction would be to generate, in this case, a traceability matrix. So folks, that is uh, working with uh, traceability matrices, and, uh, and you can experiment with this, uh, learn how to, to use it, and uh, that's, that's essentially the, the module on working with traceability matrices, both horizontal and intersection matrix. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.